With Assassin's Creed Origins debuting in October of this year, the series will be turning 10 years old, and with it comes 10 years of progress. Graphics, gameplay, and even storytelling have all made significant leaps over the years, allowing players to immerse themselves even further into the world of the Assassins and Templars. Hi, I'm Alex with The Leaderboard, and today we're looking at then versus now Assassin's Creed. We'll be comparing 2007's original Assassin's Creed to 2017's Assassin's Creed Origins. Pull up your hoods and get ready to take a leap of faith. Sci-Fi Slimdown The story of the original Assassin's Creed came as somewhat of a shock when on November 13, 2007 fans finally got their hands on the game. A majority of the gameplay and promotional trailers showcased the game taking place in the historical backdrop of the Holy Land during the Third Crusade in the year 1191. It was a bit of a surprise then when fans saw that the game opens up in the year 2012 in the white-paneled, glimmering interior of Abstergo Industries. Players took control of Desmond Miles, an ancient and ancestor of Altair, an assassin whose memories contain vital information for Abstergo Industries. Abstergo was on the hunt to find the location of a sacred treasure to the Templars, a piece of Eden, and only Desmond's ancestor Altair knew where it was hidden. Though somewhat jarring, the sci-fi elements brought a fresh, albeit somewhat convoluted premise to the series. Assassin's Creed 2 would later perfectly encapsulate this feeling with Desmond, after being visited by a member of an ancient race called the First Civilization, voicing his own confusion with the literal WTF. Over the years, Assassin's Creed has distanced itself from their science fiction storyline. Desmond's story has faded through the years and hasn't really been replaced by anything of equal significance. Some Assassin's Creed games would almost ignore this aspect of the game completely, pushing the historically stealthy stabby parts to the forefront. With the advent of Assassin's Creed Origins, it looks like this title will be continuing on this path as well. While the game does trace back to the original conflict between the Assassins and the Templars, there has been little to no mention of any gameplay taking place in present day. In an interview with Eurogamer Ashraf Ismail, creative director of Black Flag and game director of Origins, did not confirm that there would be a modern day section of the game. When asked, he replied that, we want to do justice to those fans who have supported us, so it will be an authentic Assassin's Creed experience. Ismail could be playing coy and not revealing the modern day section because he wants it to remain a surprise until the game is in the player's hands. At the same time, this could just be hinting even further at a limited role for the modern day section in Origins. Crafting Better Empires Each Assassin's Creed is always tasked with no easy feat, faithfully recreating a fully realized society. For the original Assassin's Creed, fans were able to run, climb, and assassinate their way through three cities, Jerusalem, Acre, and Damascus. These cities featured iconic landmarks that any historian would be able to spot, as well as a thriving population of city dwellers. Creating with the scimitar engine, now called the Anvil, Assassin's Creed boasted a large map with some breathtaking views. The art style and historical accuracy invoked positive critical reception, though reviews lamented that there was little to do in these sprawling cities. Unfortunately, original Assassin's Creed stumbled in its mission variety. Players were dealt a small hand of side missions to accompany the main story quest, such as information gathering, pickpocketing, saving citizens, and eavesdropping. With even positive reviews like that of the Game Informers, Critics felt that these missions soon ran redundant, knocking OG Assassin's Creed for its lack of ingenuity. Subsequent games in the series did try to widen mission variety, while keeping many of the same missions that debuted in the original. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag, recent highlights included scavenger hunts and treacherous ship battles. Famous historical figures were now featured as the quest givers in side missions, fully fleshing out the inhabitants of these ancient cities and allowing players to interact with some of history's greatest inventors, thinkers, and leaders. In the most recent game, 2015's Assassin's Creed Syndicate, players were given the chance to kidnap on behalf of Charles Darwin and even fight ghosts and ghouls with Charles Dickens. Origins is leading the change forward for the series in terms of graphic fidelity, cultural integration, and mission structure. Origins takes place 3,000 years ago in the city of Memphis, Egypt. Origins is being created by the Anvil Next 2.0 engine, the same engine that Ubisoft used for Assassin's Creed Syndicate, For Honor, and Ghost 
Recon Wildlands. The engine has some incredible features that benefit open world games such as dynamic weather, more realistic lighting and physics, with even clothing moving more realistically on characters. In terms of historical recreation, the fidelity of the Anvil Next now allows for an almost one-to-one -one likeness ratio between monuments in the game and their real-world counterparts. Assassin's Creed Unity's Notre Dame was able to look so breathtakingly real because of this. Unlike the original Assassin's Creed, which had loading zones in between the big cities, Origins is promising a much more immersive experience thanks to Ubisoft's impressive engine. It's not only the buildings and the cloth that are getting upgrades, but the residents of Memphis will be much livelier as well. While 2007 Assassin's Creed did have civilians who would occasionally help Altair by grabbing guards, most denizens of the Holy Land acted as no more than set dressing. In Origins, the developers are making it clear that the population of Memphis will be living out their own lives, regardless of what your character is doing. The developers claim that the city will be rich with people who have their own agendas and their own things to do. This will be a far cry from 2007's Assassin's Creed and allow players to sufficiently sink their teeth into the culture and common life of ancient Egypt. Utilizing Anvil Next, Origins looks to push the envelope even further with what can be achieved in the open world genre. Combat Evolved Fighting has always been a patchy area for Assassin's Creed. The original equipped Altair with a few tools to take down the Templars. Most players had to rely on his trusty hidden blades, but if you were like me, and uh, well, really bad at being stealthy, you would have to find your way out of most assassinations. These larger fights always featured Altair taking down a huge mob of enemies one by one. Enemies would form a circle around the player, with each engaging you one at a time until they're all defeated. This fighting structure is what Origins game director Asrath Ismail calls the paired animation system. As he describes it, when a player presses attack, the player character and an enemy will come together, almost regardless of distance, play an animation, and split apart. While many things have changed over the years for Assassin's Creed, this area of gameplay has had few innovations. Until now, that is. Ismail is changing directions for Origins, stating that the team wants to reinvent what it means to be Assassin's Creed. After finishing production on Black Flag, the team set out to put a fresh face on combat, among other things, in the franchise. To do so, the team is steering away from the paired animation fighting system and is instead doing a hitbox-based system. What this means is that when players hit attack, instead of initiating an animation like in 2007's Assassin's Creed, players will simply swing their weapon. If there is an enemy, players will hit. If there's nothing there, they will miss. The hitbox system sounds simple, but it opens itself up to new avenues of gameplay. Factors like enemy location, weapon range, speed, player loadout, player positioning, and enemy loadout will now have a dynamic effect on combat. While the original Assassin's Creed combat was very limited with a basic attack, counter, grab, and dodge move, Origins is expanding the moveset to allow for a more versatile approach to combat. Players will now have the option of a light attack and a heavy attack, which they could combo together Players can also parry enemies, charge up their heavy attack, and take out the footing of their enemies with the proper combo. The additions don't end there, as players will also have an adrenaline meter at the bottom of their screens. This meter will fill up during regular combat by landing hits on enemies. When full, unleashing the meter will allow players to use devastating attacks on their foes. These attacks vary depending on which weapon you're using, with some delivering single killing blows and others putting the player into fury mode, where they get to rain devastating station down upon their enemies for about 10 seconds. Sounds fun! With their new combat system also comes a revamped way to go about engaging the enemy. Assassin's Creed Syndicate introduced a skill tree system, allowing players to choose upgrades to either Jacob or Evie that would allow them to be better at stealth or head-on combat. The skills didn't tip the scales too highly in either character's favor, but it was a refreshing change of pace for a series that allowed players to tackle mission objectives any way they saw fit. Origins is continuing the skill tree for the Egyptian assassin Bayek and is adding some much needed depth to the system. In the abilities section of the in-game menu, players will receive points that they can spend when leveling up. It is divided into three sections, warrior, hunter, and seer. These additions will allow players a more custom gameplay experience that some found lacking in the original. While 2007's Assassin's Creed did have some advanced combat techniques, such as defense and grab breaks, they ultimately 
seem like a placeholder for a better system that was in the works. Origins will buck this trend come October with a wide variety of both weapons and techniques along with a completely revamped fighting style. This is great news for players like me who can't seem to stealth kill anyone even if our lives depended on it. A Walk on the Wild Side Attributing the somewhat sterile appearance of the 2007's Assassin's Creed was the apparent lack of any real wildlife in the Holy Land. Damascus, Acre, and Jerusalem did feature the iconic eagle soaring above, and Altair did ride his trusty white steed from city to city, but aside from that, there wasn't much else. Assassin's Creed 3 drastically changed that by adding an interactive wildlife, which fit hand in hand with the culture of the Native American protagonist Connor. Players were challenged with successful tracking, killing, and skinning wildlife such as bears, beavers, cougars, deer, and more. Black Flag took this mechanic one step further by adding sea creatures into the mix as well, the most notable being the inclusion of shark hunting. Besides bringing back bad flashbacks from Treasure Trove Cove and Banjo-Kazooie, these shark hunts not only added a nice variety to the gameplay, but made the wilds of America and the seas of the Caribbean feel like they were full of life. Assassin's Creed is no stranger to animal appreciation, having players actually take control of an eagle for the first time. The eagle, named Senu, will allow players to scout out areas such as bandit camps and let Bayek plan out his attack accordingly. Bayek will also be traversing Memphis on Camelback, which is pretty noteworthy in and of itself because, well, camels are amazing. Bayek will also be battling some pretty nasty animals, including a giant snake seen in the reveal trailer for the game. Egypt's wide variety of habitats allow for a multitude of animals to thrive, such as flamingos, cheetahs, hyenas, and leopards. Including a robust wildlife system adds an additional layer of immersion and gameplay that was absent from the original Assassin's Creed. 2007's Assassin's Creed, while at the time a definite trendsetter in terms of open world development and immersive parkour gameplay, certainly has its fair share of differences from its most recent iterations. With Origins due to the release this fall, fans will get to experience what 10 years of storytelling, combat, and world building have taught Assassin's Creed. Our little Altair is all grown up. Once again, I'm Alex with the leaderboard, and thanks for taking a look back with us at then versus now Assassin's Creed. This franchise has seen some very interesting changes throughout the years, and Origins looks like it's going to be the craziest one yet. Any other Assassin's Creed games you'd like us to look at? Which Assassin would you like to know more about? Hit us up with your suggestions and comments below. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to become part of the notification notification squad. If you like getting more from your games, make sure to subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.